myself i am ravi kumar guntu i am a doctoral student at the department of hydrology and i am the pm of pmr of awardi and the hands on session will be delivered on the topic of prediction of flood hydrograph using neural networks okay so in this next one and a half hour if you are with me and if you follow the hands on session i will guarantee that you will become an expert in solving a problem using neural networks so here in this seven slides i'll be demonstrating what is a problem statement and how we are approaching the problem and what we are going to achieve at the end of this hands on session the problem is we need to predict flood hydrograph using this given data so the data which is shown on the screen is a temporal variation of rainfall with respect to time so for the first eight time steps we are having 4 hour excess rainfall and the corresponding hydrograph is shown in the third column and at the time steps 20 to 22 we have a 1 and 1/2 hour excess rainfall and we have the corresponding hydrograph now using this data we need to predict what will be the hydrograph for the next 2 hour excess rainfall that is from time steps from 33 onwards from 33 to 34 we have this 4 hour excess rainfall and the aim or the objective of this hands on session is to predict that flood hydrograph for the for a 2 hour excess rainfall okay so this is the problem statement so we have a very clear goal that we need to predict flood hydrograph for the 2 hour excess rainfall now how are we going to approach this problem so one tool or technique that is available for predicting any time series is artificial neural networks it is one of the technique it is not the only technique it is one of the basic and standard technique and here i would like to emphasize one more time here the problem is being demonstrated for considering a hydrological time series but the method can be applied to any other time series for instance if a researcher if he is working in groundwater he can use this model for predicting his groundwater level if a researcher if he is working in water quality he can use this model for predicting the water quality if the researcher or the study if it is focused towards stream water flow or anything okay so this is a technique i'm trying to demonstrate the technique and you can use this technique for your problem okay as an application i have selected flood hydrograph a typical neural network model appears as a extreme led figure which is an input output model okay basically here we have two components the first component is we should provide an input and there is a hidden layer and then that hidden layer tries to obtain a relationship and then it transfers the information to the output layer so i'll go in deep uh, to the mathematics and then i'll come back to this slide once again okay so here we have an input time series say uh, for example x now we need to predict y to keep it in a very simple terms like we need to predict y assume like mx plus c y is equal to mx plus c so here the relationship is not straight forward like mx plus c but if you look into y is a function of x which is 2 by 1 power e power something so that is an equation and using that equation we are trying to obtain what will be the f of x given a value of x so this process of obtaining f of x will be happening in the first box okay and then how are we going to achieve this relationship if i go one step back there is an important terminology called transfer function so this transfer fun function it tries to model the f of x given the value of x for instance here you should apply a certain um, tech, uh, kind of understanding like okay how my value may vary with respect to my given data so i see a straight line relationship okay there is a straight linear relationship whatever i give 
like there is a straight direct relationship then i'll go for a linear transfer function the first one on the other side okay there is a understanding says like okay if the value of x increases the value of y increases but after a certain point of time there won't be any increase further and the relationship continues then you should choose a transfer function symmetric saturating linear so this is that uh, transfer function on the other side now uh, we are looking at a log sigmoid function where if your value is zero but still there will be a certain y value for instance like if you consider a rainfall groundwater relationship even though there might be a rainfall but still there exists a minimum groundwater upon the value uh, as the x axis increases as the value increases we can see then there is a gradual increase in the y value now we have a tangent sigmoid function where it is very straightforward now there is no rainfall there is no stream flow but as the rainfall increases stream flow increases so this transfer function plays a critical role in deriving or in ensuring the success of the prediction so the idea of uh, the transfer function is that you should understand okay how your relationship may vary and accordingly you just cho you should choose the transfer function so here the default transfer function in the hands on session is tangent sigmoid and also i assume my rainfall runoff relationship will be also tangent sigmoid okay so now though i have considered tangent sigmoid as my transfer function to derive f of x given the value of x so there is a plot which shows the relationship between x and i where x is your input time series like the rainfall now we need to derive i to derive i i'm going to use the transfer function right so i is equal to w times t or w multiplied by x plus b so here w is the weight and b is the bias when we model a relationship right not uh, so then we will obtain this parameters called w and b in the hidden layer the first box and now focus on the second box in the second box the obtained y values will now become x values that is t of i and your y is the flood hydrograph values so now if i compare these two boxes in the problem statement i have given already x and y now what neural network does is that it tries to estimate what is i and what is t of i is the problem clear for you we have x and we have y and the first architecture in the architecture in the first box we need to derive what is i that i will be derived from the transfer function next that i will be transferred to the x axis in the second box and then it models a relationship between t of i and your given y values so in this process there will be a weight at the first box and bias at the first box and correspondingly there will be an output weight vector and output bias okay so now how do we do the prediction so there will be an equation at the end y is equal to w not times t of i plus b so we need we will be predicting what will be our y based on w not and then we'll see this problem step by step so i've shared the data to this problem in this particular qr code so i'll be waiting uh, i'll be having 2 minutes here please download the data since uh, most of the participants do not have uh, a prior experience in matlab uh, so parallelly i'll be explaining uh, the syntax of the matlab and the problem right so a typical matlab looks like the screen where we have mainly four components okay the middle part is the editor where we have the cursor okay so where i am moving my cursor it is the editor where we will type our program okay now in this particular editor we will execute for instance um, if i type a is equal to 5 so now i have written the statement called a is equal to 5 now to execute the statement there is this called command window so in the command window the execution will happen 
So in order to execute a statement in MATLAB, we need to highlight the line. Now to execute, there are two options. The first one is right click the statement and then click on evaluate selection. And the second option is press F9. So I've used the right click option and I've evaluated the statement, right? So that statement will be executed in the command window. So this is the second main feature in the MATLAB. Now the third main feature is the workspace. So the variables or the statements which we execute in the command window, the outputs will be stored in the workspace. Now if you look into the workspace, we have this variable called A and there is this value called 5. Okay, so this is the third main feature in MATLAB. So editor to command window, command window to workspace. Now how to store this value? We have the fourth feature called current directory. Okay, where we can select this output or the result, save as. So now you can save your variable in any other folder or by default it will store in the current directory. So here you can rename your variable and it will be stored by default in the current directory. So the current directory is the extreme left panel, okay, where you will have your all scripts, functions, and variables. Okay, so to just recap, we have four main features in MATLAB for the beginners, yeah. So we have the editor, we will execute the lines in the editor, and the execution happens in the command window, second most important thing and then the variables will be stored in the workspace. Third one, and the outputs can be stored in the current directory, okay? Now, we'll be going into the problem statement. So, so here, I've loaded the program already. So this is a call, this is called as a script in MATLAB, okay? So the advantage of using editor is that it differentiates the statements with the different colors. For example, if you are loading any variable from the current directory, it will be highlighted as a pink color. So for some times, our program will be transferred to another user, right? So he needs to understand what is the meaning of the statement, which means we need to provide certain statements to understand the program. So that can be done using the green color. So simply if we keep percentile in front of the statement. Okay, so here, so what I did, I have removed the percentile. Upon removing the percentile, the color has changed. But it is a statement for the end user to understand what is that. So to do that, use percentile. So now if we keep percentile, it is a statement. So in this particular program, I have given all the statements, like what is the meaning of uh, each and every line, okay? So now the first step, in order to solve this problem, we need to input the time series. We have 32 time steps of rainfall, 32 time steps of flood hydrograph. So we need to input that data. In order to input any data in MATLAB, we, we should use the function called load, L-O-A-D and that particular file name. So the file is R and T, R and F. Okay, so we have executed the function called load. So it has inputted or it has loaded the time series of rainfall and flood hydrograph in the workspace. So now in the workspace we can clearly see there are three variables. Now I'm not interested in A anymore. Like I just need only F, the flood and rainfall. Now I want to delete the unnecessary variable. So how to do that? Simply select the variable. So if you right click, there will be certain options like save as or delete or rename. So you can rename your variable. Say for instance, if you're not interested in naming rainfall as R, so you can change it to some other variable using rename. Or if you want to save that variable, save as. 
or if you are not interested in that variable anymore, you can delete that. So, uh, so we shall proceed for the hands-on in this way. Like initially, I'll be giving a demonstration of the program, and then uh, simultaneously we will do the program. Okay. So I have loaded the inputs. Now uh, for the uh, neural networks, there is a syntax uh, uh, format. Like for example, like if we look into f and r, they are the value is in double, right? So we need to convert the existing format to a cell format in order to run the MATLAB uh, neural networks. So in order to convert the format from value to a cell, we should use this function called num to cell, number to cell, okay? So now I'm operating, so I've so I've selected the line, I'm executing it using evaluate selection or alternatively press F9. Now please pay attention to the workspace where you will notice a difference between X and R. Right, there is a format difference, right? One is in cell format. So for the default neural networks, we need to provide the data in a cell format. So here X is our target variable, or uh, sorry, the input variable rainfall and T is the target variable flood hydrograph. So we have converted the format using num to cell. So the first step is finished. We have loaded the inputs and we have prepared the inputs as per the requirements of neural networks. Now, the second and most important thing is that we need to create the architecture or a empty skeleton. So in order to show that or in order to do that, so now our objective is to create the skeleton, okay, which is at the extreme left one, the skeleton. So we have provided the input, that is the first green box, and we have provided our output, which is the uh, target variable, which is at the bottom green box. Now, we need to create the architecture, okay? Which means, how many hidden layers I'm interested in? What is the type of transfer function? So here, we need to choose a, an algorithm to train the architecture. So that, by default, we have Levenberg, Markret algorithm. Uh, we also have additional another two. So by default, we are going with train LM, okay? So the role of this training function is that we have the architecture. Now the architecture will be trained or in terms of, or it will be calibrated using this algorithm, okay? It's like using this algorithm, we will be deriving what is W, the weight and what is bias. Now we are creating an empty, empty skeleton or empty architecture, okay? So to do that, how many hidden layers? I'm interested in two. It's an experiment again. It is not known prior. It, we need to understand and we need to do a lot of iterations. Okay, for demonstration, I'm considering two as the number of hidden layers. Now. Input delays, okay. So in our previous talk, uh, we have listened to Dr. Pankaj related to causality, right? Where we have our own source variable, like x. Now we want to predict x using its own previous values, right? Which we call it as delays. So I'm interested in prediction of flood hydrograph. So that can be done using its own values, previous values. Like, okay, how many previous values do I need to go for? Like, is it the past day or the previous two days? It depends on your prediction. So here, I'm interested in two delays. It's an, again an experiment. So for demonstration, I'm going for two delays. Now, hidden layer size. So size, okay, uh, sorry, earlier one was the number of delays, which is n equal to two, the previous two days, and then hidden layer, I'm just going with the default 10 hidden layers. Now the most important thing in the line number 18 is the empty or 
an a null architecture okay it is a null architecture which is like you consider yourself before joining btech you do not have any knowledge about your coursework etc now though you have entered your btech okay so i'm creating a null model here you are that null model so i'm creating a null prediction model with two hands two legs two eyes in a similar way number of hidden layers are two number of delays are two and in addition to that what it is asking so time delay net is the function to create that neural networks okay time delay net and it is asking how many input delays are there two how many hidden layers are there three or 10 and what is the training function i provide that training function 11 bug so in order to create an empty architecture you are not you haven't provided any of your inputs you have just created a model to create a model you need three things one is how many delays the previous values how many hidden layers 10 by default and what is the training function okay now we have created an empty model now this empty model will be fed with your inputs in order to do that we need to prepare our time series we need to prepare our time series before fetching that inputs into the model we need to prepare the time series okay so so far we have just created we have loaded the inputs we have provided what is a training algorithm and then we have created an empty architecture now fourth step or step 4 is to prepare the data for fetching into the model so it consists of three things so the empty model that is net so which we have saved it as net so i'll be executing now i'll be executing step 3 okay you can execute entire program in one go by simply selecting all the lines and then press f9 okay so my empty model has been created so i have loaded the inputs i have prepared the inputs i have prepared an empty model now i am going for the next step that is preparation of the time series so to prepare the time series we have this function called prepare ts okay so again this is for a matlab user simple it's a simple what i'm trying to explain is that we have left hand side terms we have right side right hand side terms and in between there is an equal to so now prepare ts is the function using this function we have provided the inputs that is net x and t so using this inputs prepare ts will execute the program and it, it will store the output on the right hand side terms like x xi ai and t okay so this is how matlab operates so it starts with the right hand side time uses this function and then the outputs will be stored in the left hand side okay so for the prepare ts what are the inputs empty model yeah please so the previous step is related to how matlab operates right so in matlab we have the right hand side terms and the function is prepare ts for example it might be any other function also in future now that particular component will be executed and then the outputs will be stored in your x xi a a and t so it executes and then it come backs to your variables and then stores the outputs in the given variables for example if we do not provide any variables and the if and if the statement starts with prepare it is directly then by default the answer will be stored as ans in order to avoid so here we want to have a terminology for the prepare ts so we have given this terminology called x which is our input series xi number of lags ai and tt is the target okay so we will see i have executed the net if you see in the workspace there is n you are not getting so the prerequisite for the neural networks is the uh, statistics toolbox i think when you have installed the software you have just chosen the default matlab but not its addons uh, so in a later phase in a later phase you try to install the addons also 
I would encourage you to install the add-on so that this package will be, or you can use the neural networks, okay? So in a later phase also, simply if you rerun the software again, if you reinstall, if you reinstall, it will say already that, okay, you have installed the MATLAB, there are these add-ons. So you can select the add-ons and then click install next, 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 okay? But it will take some time. Why? Because the default MATLAB, I think, I believe, it has occupied 9 GB of your RAM, and it has taken certain time to install. But if you choose all the add-ons, uh, it will consume approximately maybe some 54 GB to 55 GB, and it will take a lot of time. If we do that now, we cannot continue hands-on session. It will take half a day to install the software, and it depends on your processing. So uh, I motivate you to follow the hands-on session, and then when you get some time, try to install the add-ons, and then please practice the session, okay? So, yeah, but I'll try to uh, make it, like, I'll try to make you feel like that you are doing the exercise without doing it, actually. So here, <laughs> we have the prepare TS time series, where the inputs, for the prepare TS is that, okay, uh, I need to prepare my time series, that is fine, but on, with, on what basis, on, on with what perspective I need to create this time series? Then we need to say to the software that, okay, I've created an empty model. Now use this empty model. And I have given in the empty model, like how many delays I needed, and how many hidden neurons I have needed. So using this empty model, and then we have provided our rainfall time series, our flood hydrograph time series. So it goes to the empty model, and then it realizes, okay, the user has asked 10 hidden layers, and the user has asked two delays. Accordingly, when I operate or when I execute this function, if you look into the workspace, please pay attention to small x. Small x is 1 by 30. So it has read that, okay, in the empty model, the user has asked two delays. So it has removed two values, and it has started the source or the rainfall series from the third time step onwards. So in total, we have 32 values. So the first two values have gone into delays. And the time series has started from three, OK? So here, the first two time steps, that is one and two, now are considered as delays. The actual rainfall series starts from 25.4 and so on up to zero. So here in MATLAB, you can view the variable if you double click on the, so here if you double click clearly, you can see the variable has started with 25.4, okay? So in prepare TS, what it does simply is that it removes the delays and then it creates the time series. So now, Too much information. So X, XI. XI is the rainfall series. Time steps from 3 to 32, 30 values. XI, the second term, is the number of delays. That is 2. Look into the workspace. XI, 1 by 2, the first two values. AI, I'll get back to that at a later phase. T is the target. So target is also 30 values. And the previous two values, so T, we have here t, small t, 1 by 30, OK? OK, the problem statement is we have 32 and 32. We have removed the top two as delays, and we are pro proceeding ahead with the 30 time steps, OK? That we have achieved using prepare TS. If you look into the statements, everything has been demonstrated or very much clearly written in the comments. X is the rainfall, XI is the lagged rainfall, T is the target or the flood where, OK. Now, the most important factor in any model is to train or in calibrate, right? Simulate the model. We need to simulate. We know that we should not give entire data to the model. Rather, a few sample. So there are several ways to divide the data. So one standard approach is to divide the data into 70% for the calibration 
and remaining 30 percentage for the validation okay there are several other techniques like leave or not cross validation or five fold cross validation or k fold cross validation so here i'm just trying to demonstrate the math works or the neural networks default option so neural networks how it does is that it divides the data into three components actually okay now you are a little bit confused what are three components okay now i'm a client i have come to you for a purpose i have given you 100 samples and then i have asked you to create a model and the outcome is that you need to predict now the user wants to check whether the model is doing well or not or whether the, whether the model is satisfactory or not now he comes with a new data with his own data to test the user uh, okay uh, so I've given uh, a task uh, to these people and now I would like to test the product. So now I want to test the product and to do that, I haven't given some sample to the organization or the user. Now, that sample, I'll say it as zero for time being here. If you see here, because I have the test sample So this is my test sample. I won't be giving this test sample to the training. This I will use it for my future. If you notice, there are three fractions here. One is for training, how much percentage of the data? For validation, how much percentage of the data? For testing, how much percentage of the data? So here, the testing, I have made it to zero because I have saved that sample for my future, okay? And I have provided 70% for the calibration and 30% for the validation. Here, you may be having a doubt, like why do we need 30% of the data for validation? What is the benefit? Okay, to keep it very simple, uh, how do we know that our obtained weights or obtained model is performing satisfactorily or not? How do we know? So to do that, we are like keeping some sample which is not given to the data. Now we are testing that model for our own self satisfaction that okay, whether the model is performing well or not. You know, the real logic, how the algorithm works is that, you know, in the training also, we have six validation checks, which means during the training phase, with 70% of the data, we will obtain weights like W and B. And then we will do the prediction. That prediction will be done for the 30% of the sample. And then we will look the error, we'll look into the error. Okay, these are the these are the 30% of the samples. Now I've predicted using the 70% of the sample. And then I'll compare the error. What is the error? And if the error is less than the given value, then I will proceed ahead. Then I'm then I feel satisfied. Okay. The, the error is within the limits. Then I'll go ahead and say, okay, now the model is ready. If the error is not in a satisfactory, then again, I will reiterate the training phase. And then again, I'll go back to validation and then check the error. I'll repeat this process until I get a satisfactory performance. And then I feel confident about my model that, okay, the model is can predict the future values with a satisfactory performance. Okay, so here, in order to repeat, what we did is that simply we have prepared the time series where we have separated the data into delays and the rest of our time series. And the second thing is prep dividing the data into three components. So here we have divided the data into 70, 30, and zero. The most important phase, we have arrived the most important phase. Okay, so we have prepared, we have loaded the input, we have given a training algorithm, we have created an empty model, we have prepared the time series. Now, we are training the algorithm, we are training the algorithm. So to train the algorithm, we need to provide using this function called NET. 
if we have the function net, it will train the empty model. Now we have the empty model. Now using this empty model, we have provided the inputs. The inputs are rainfall x, xi, lag rainfall, and ai. ai is zero for this example. So the model will train based on rainfall and its lag rainfall, x, xi. NET is the function to train the empty model. OK? Oh, I've gone to the test. So train. In train, we need to provide NET. So now, OK, this is the empty model. These are the inputs. Now train this model using the function called train. So train, we have the network. X is the rainfall. T is the flood hydrograph. X is, XI is the lagged rainfall. AA, I'll come back to this, OK? Now the training will happen. OK, what is the meaning in MATLAB? Like, what is, the, what is the physical meaning of this equation? The physical meaning is that you should f focus only on NET in the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. So NET is the empty model. Now this empty model will be trained. OK, this empty model with your inputs, it will be trained. And that trained model will be saved as NET again on the right hand side. It's simply like you have been to college, empty model, you have given training, and then you have come back. So the same person has returned back with some knowledge, with some understanding. The so same happens here. We have an empty network. We have provided the inputs. Now the training has happened, and the trained model has returned back and been saved as NET. OK. So here, this is a layout. If we click on the network diagram, so the network diagram is the same. OK. Input, number of delays are two. And there is a transfer function, which models the data. And the results will be transferred to the output layer and the final output. OK. The idea of training is nothing but to obtain what is W and B at the hidden layer to obtain W and B at the output layer. OK, so the model has been trained. Now we need to test the network. OK, so to test the network, like how do you do? Like you have the model, right? Like assume y is equal to mx plus c. How do you test that model? Simply if you put x, you know what is m and you know what is x. If you put x, you will obtain y. That is a prediction. Even, even in this particular model also, now we need to provide those values, inputs. And then it will predict the flood hydrograph. Okay? The inputs are only rainfall and lag rainfall. So in the step six, it's we are providing what is a rainfall and lag rainfall. Okay? So this is the most important part. Okay? So here you should pay attention. So now we are testing the model. Okay? So to test the model, I've been providing what is X and XI. Rainfall, lag rainfall. Okay, so I've predicted the flood hydrograph, which means out of 32 time steps, we have removed two and we have given 30. Now what I did, I have modeled the data. Now using this model, I've predicted what will be the flood hydrograph for the given rainfall. I already have the original 30 flood hydrographs, right? Now using this model, I've predicted new 30 values. Now what is my job? I need to see how well they are matching. So simply, I'm not going into the uh, skill of the model, but rather I'll be showing a plot. Like, OK, how well the model is able to predict, OK? It's yeah, to do plotting, uh, the plotting won't work in the cell format. Again, we need to convert the values from cell to normal. So to do that, we have this function called cell to mat. In the beginning, we did num to cell, like a traditional value to a cell format. Now we are going back again from a cell to normal format. So 
so what we did is that so there is that legend which clearly shows that we have the rainfall and the observed hydrograph is given in blue color whereas the red line shows the predicted flood value so how we have achieved this so we have obtained the red values using this function called uh, in the step sticks called net so using this net we have provided the values and we have obtained the y value that y is the red color okay and how we have achieved this red if we go one step back we have trained the model for the given input series we have trained the model to derive the weights and biases now using those weights and biases in the next step and the inputs it is predicting y so this is how if we modify the data or if we yeah uh, here again it's to this you know we can beautify this image also at a later phase i'll explain that but simply to recap see i need, i know it's very difficult uh, for the first time uh, to understand from first to last i'll take it very simple load the data provide the training algorithm give your input time series and then create an empty architecture now for the empty architecture prepare the time series now after preparing the time series train the model after training the model test the model okay it's very simple load the data train an algorithm inputs empty architecture train the architecture test the architecture okay and we will be able to see this uh, picture we can beautify this uh, by simply clicking on edit if we click edit this i'll explain it later uh, once we achieve the full objective okay i'll come back to this after achieving the full objective the full objective is to predict the flood hydrograph for the 2 hour excess rainfall right now we need to go we need to carry this model to the next phase okay so we have prepared a model okay we have prepared the model to predict the flood hydrograph what we need to provide rainfall now yeah? what is our input our input is rainfall so load the input rainfall rp So here is the rainfall per 2 hour excess rainfall. This is the 2 hour excess rainfall. So I have provided this rainfall. Now our overarching goal or the aim is to predict the flood hydrograph. So as usual, we need to create the lags, right? so now you will be confusing what is this lags this lags will come from the previous two days so this is day number 33 so now i'll be using the lag rainfall information of 31 and 32 okay so that statement the statement number line number 66 is nothing but pick up the rainfall lags or lag rainfall from your original time series okay so the original time series is r and number of delays are 2 so this simple equation will say that okay there are two delays and the lag rainfall is 2 2 days now we have four values rp and lag rainfall 2 days as i've mentioned to you to execute the model we need to convert the data from a value or a normal double thing to a cell format num to cell again So 
so we have created or we have changed the format again i'm saying for the for the model what are the inputs only the rainfall that is xp lagged rainfall xpa four days is the rainfall two days is the lagged rainfall okay now using this model called net we are trying to predict what will be the flood hydrograph and we are storing we are storing that value in yp great we have predicted we have predicted what will be the flood hydrograph for the next four days now again i want to view the plot or how it is coming up so here as i mentioned to you to do the plotting it cannot be done in cell rather it can be done in matrix so cell to mat okay so what i did is that like i want to view the complete plot like right from time step 1 to time step 36 including both the calibration data and for the four values okay so to do that i i need to combine two matrices so to combine two matrices you can do that like by opening a square bracket matrix 1 space matrix 2 close bracket okay so this is our end goal the end goal is to predict the flood hydrograph that is shown in the extreme right corner the red color okay so the problem statement was you are provided with rainfall which is shown in black color and you have given the flood hydrograph values for 32 time steps now the question is what will be the flood hydrograph for the next 4 days that is red color so to do that we have developed a model okay we have developed a model the model consists of only three things empty architecture and then the input time series okay so here i'll uh, just summarize the things and then who are having the facility uh, to execute the program uh, can do so and who are uh, not having uh, the software at the moment can just view the comments view the comments at for each and every line okay so to summarize our we have given with a problem the problem was to predict the flood hydrograph using neural networks for 2 hour excess rainfall so to do that first we have loaded the data so the data is rainfall and flood so for the syntax challenge with the math, uh, neural networks we have converted the double format to a cell format okay x and t so you can also imagine with an another problem also you can you can imagine with your own problem okay so here x can be your say for example maybe temperature and uh, with respect to temperature how my vegetation is behaving that could be your target okay or x is the human activity or the pumping rate and t could be the depletion in the ground water level x could be uh, an input uh, so you can imagine your own problem okay so here we are solving a problem of rainfall and flood so x is the rainfall and t is the flood so the second step is to choose a training algorithm third step is to create an empty architecture which needs delays number of layers fourth one is to prepare the data for training and validation now to we are training the model to train the model just provide your input rainfall lag rainfall and then test the network upon testing if you feel satisfactory using measures like correlation coefficient or nash shuttle coefficient 
or mean square error or RMSC or normalized RMSC or anything. And then if you feel confident enough that, okay, my model is able to perform satisfactorily, then go ahead for the prediction. And to predict, just provide your inputs once again. And then just use this function called NET, the model, the obtained model, NET. And using that model, predict, and then obtain the results, okay? So here, uh, th this program will help you to plot uh, the time series with different multiple variables. That's it. And then here, I told I'll come back to AI, right? So if we go, uh, there are different, okay, now the question is, is it the only model available with the neural networks? No, it is not the only model. We have just used a simple model. Simple model, why it is a simple model? Because we have just used the previous day rainfall only. Okay, our target is flood. So it's a non-linear input-output. Okay, so f is a function of t plus one. Or uh, We are trying to predict the flood based on my inputs of rainfall and the previous day rainfall. There are other models like non-linear autoregressive. Okay, I'm a bit skeptical about my rainfall values. I'm not interested in using rainfall values, but rather I'm confident about my own discharge values. I don't want to use my rainfall values then there is an option. You can go with a nonlinear autoregressive, which means you can develop a prediction system with your own previous day values. Autoregressive means you are trying to simulate or you are trying to obtain a relationship with your previous day observations. If you look into the equation, the third one, f is a function of, uh, so our flood is a function of flood and its previous day rainfalls only. Okay, now though we have a very complex model. Okay, I want to use the lagged information of rainfall. I want to use the lagged information of stream flow also to enhance my prediction. Then you can go with this NAX model, N-A-R-X, okay? Non-linear, autoregressive, which means it is a non-linear model, higher order, more than one. Autoregressive, okay, it is using its own delays with exogenous inputs. In addition, it is also having an external input like rainfall. So in MathWorks or in MATLAB, we have three models, okay? First one is simple nonlinear input output model that we have worked out. Second thing is NAR, which is based on its own values, nonlinear autoregressive. And the third one is nonlinear autoregressive with external inputs or exogenous inputs, yeah. So we have in MATLAB three varieties and it depends on the uh, options that you are having, depending on the data that you are having, you can choose any one of the model, okay? Yeah, so with this, uh, I've achieved the end goal. The end goal is to predict the flood hydrograph using neural networks, okay? So now uh, I encourage or I motivate uh, the uh, audience or the SP participants to Execute this software if you are having a prior experience in MATLAB. If you are not having an experience, go through the script. Read each, each and every line. If you are having any doubts, I'll come to you individually, and then we can discuss that particular component. Okay, so with this, I conclude this presentation. with, uh, And then you can continue the uh, practicing. I'll be here. I'll be helping you. Okay, good. Thank you.